What not to do when fired from your job. Welcome to our YouTube video series that analyzes aspects associated with employee terminations from a legal perspective with the hope of expanding your thinking about your personal situation and what might be beneficial to look at. As with most things that I deal with as a lawyer, a lot of this will be generalities as we do not and cannot cover every aspect nor address them with a specificity that is particular to your personal situation. Nonetheless, the hope is that we get you thinking and considering things that you might not have otherwise looked into, which is particularly important when you consider the topic of this video. What not to do when fired from your job. Number one, don't depart without your documents. Your employer is going to cut you off from the means to challenge their exit package. Nevertheless, there are many documents that are properly your own, even though they might be kept at your office desk. As such, you need to either be taking them with you on your departure or requesting that you be provided with those documents. As they are critical to assessing your employer's offer, given that employment contracts, pay statements, benefit plans, etc. were provided for the employee's personal retention and therefore should not be prevented from being taken. Number two, don't rush the process. Take the time to process the situation. There is no benefit in rushing your response to being fired or otherwise terminated from your job. In most circumstances, your former employer has expended considerable time in the lead up to your job release, even though it might feel rushed from your perspective. So don't let yourself be rushed, but take adequate time to consider your situation and how best to approach it, while taking in the insights and guidance of others, including knowledgeable professionals, such that you are making the best possible decision for yourself. Number three, not reviewing the termination severance package prior to accepting it. If you're not providing your now former employer with no further value, they're going to want to limit their costs associated with your departure, such that you can expect many termination severance packages to be as small as the employer can get away with. If you look at economics associated with employee severance, the cost savings can be substantial, especially with most terminated employees lacking the interest to challenge, much less scrutinize, the severance package, thus making low-ball initial offers financially lucrative and being a key reason for having your termination severance package reviewed prior to accepting it. Number four, signing a release where it isn't necessary. If all that you are being paid is a statutory minimum of termination pay of lieu of notice, there is no need to sign a release, given that your former employer cannot withhold your termination pay in lieu of notice. It must be paid within the statutory time period stipulated and without obligation. Furthermore, if all you are receiving is a statutory minimum, there is very little harm in having your employment situation reviewed by a knowledgeable lawyer. Given that such situations tend to be limited to this single issue, but typically have even more issues that the terminated employee needs to investigate and deal with. Number five, limiting your review to termination pay, severance pay. When you're fired from your job, you need to be looking at the entirety of your employment not simply the final exit. And for whatever reason, most employment lawyers make this very same mistake. And I do have my personal theories as to why that might be the case. Notwithstanding, you really need to be looking at your payroll. Since this is earned money that is afforded statutory protections and can represent some very serious money that you are legally entitled to. And if you go through my YouTube videos, you'll see how serious it is and why it is central to many of my major lawsuits. 
Number six, don't refuse transition services. Taking advantage of your former employer's offer of transition services shouldn't be seen as preventing you from concurrently going after your former employer for potential underpayments. In truth, these transition services enable the employer to limit severance pay should they be challenged in court. Given that failing to pursue replacement employment works against the former employee, while speeding up the process of finding a new job with the transition services will reduce court-awarded severance pay, such that offering transition services is a win-win proposal for an employer that is taken to court over their severance pay offer. Number seven, don't disparage your supervisor or coworkers. Little good ever comes out of insulting or demeaning others, even though it might feel good in the moment. So if you have to let it go, do it so no one can hear and it can't come back to harm you. Meanwhile, you never know when you might need to call on your former supervisor or colleagues with respect to your current employment situation and opportunities that might arise in the future. Similarly, you don't want to disparage your employer or the company you worked for, as nobody wants to hire someone who demeans and badmouths their former employer. And number eight, don't lose faith in yourself. Although it's entirely natural to take it personal, most employee terminations are driven by factors that have nothing to do with you as a person. And in those circumstances where it is personal, that all too often is a result of your former employer being a poor leader and having their own personal issues that they seek to transfer onto their employees, and in particular those they fire so as to deal with their personal deficiencies and inadequacies. So don't despair, because even though it might be difficult at the outset, you need to be looking forward as that is the only possible direction for yourself. And in time, you might well realize that it was time to move on and your life is better as a result of this career development. Thank you.